Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Leslie fucking Jones. Leslie Jones, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Good morning. Hello. 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 How you feeling today? I'm good. I was looking for Jess, you know. She's uh she got shows in Detroit this week. Yeah, she's in Detroit. I, I, thought, I thought she was gonna be here so I can kiki. That's my girl. You met her just before? Oh, are you kidding okay, me? Okay. Yes. And she is so funny. I gotta say that. She's one of my favorite people on Instagram. I love her shit. She always make me laugh. So funny. What kind of jewels do you give the young uh, female stand-ups like Jess? Uh, uh, well, Jess, shit, she don't need no. She she gets it. Like yeah. mm-hmm. this is the one thing I love about Jess though is that she's confident enough to be like very sexy, and still do comedy. See, when I was coming up, it was just a rule. Just you know, okay, I'll put it like this: women comedians have to go through a certain thing. Like if I dress sexy and walk on stage for five minutes, I'm not going to be heard because when I walk on stage, the first thing is you're going to get the women going, oh, does she think she cute? And then they're going to look at their man Mm -hmm. and be like, oh, does he think, does he want to fuck her? And then you got the man. So that's five minutes of Mm -hmm. going, like all that happens. Gotcha. Um, So I used to just do the t-shirt, jeans, tennis shoe, so you can pay attention to me. But the thing I like about her is that she don't give a fuck. Like she's going to go up there and she's going to do her fun and she's going to do her. And I I like that, that women are starting to become more like, I'm I'm fucking, like I'm a dude, I'm still funny and I'm fine as fuck. Like it's it's like, I love that. So um, what I would give, what I always give young women is to, you don't have to prove that you're a woman. Mm-hmm. Like Jess does go on stage and do that, but like you, she doesn't have to prove she's a woman. That's right. Like a lot of female comics write like period jokes or mm-hmm. diss jokes. If you can make them funny, that's different. Just be yourself. That's real. You know, um, yeah, yeah, that's what I would do. I was just like, always keep writing. Don't stay on the same thing. You should refresh your set a lot. You should always be writing new jokes. And, and 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 anything that you think is funny is definitely something you should go on stage and try. What advice would you give her about having a permanent gig on top of the stand up? Like you know, just say a daily show or a daily radio show. Like you what? mean like this show, like, like the Breakfast Club, one, like, like the, the one that she should yeah. be here for now. That yeah. one, yeah. Uh, I would say to keep doing what she's doing okay. because see, to me, Jess is gonna bring you numbers. That's Jess right. is gonna mm-hmm. bring you a whole different and no mm-hmm. shitting on y'all, but y'all all men. That's Fuck right. y'all. I agree. And y'all don't know shit about bitches. Trust me, I I listen to your shit. You right. (laughs) You don't know nothing about pussy. Nothing. (laughs) Not a fucking thing. You right. And and to me, when Jess is on here, she really be like, you know, doing her thing. You know, I I really like her responses. She's not scared of Mm y'all. So I would tell her to continue. Because she, one thing I like about her, I bet she she gets the numbers. Because she continuously put that content out. I bet you she gets the numbers. That's somebody y'all need on here. She's a culture shifter. Yeah, you Absolutely. really do. You really do Jess. need to like and bring some youth to this room. I'm, I'm not like again. I'm not insulting you. Yes, you are, but not. Yeah, I'm not insulting. But you're not lying. <laughs> but you I ain't lying. lying. But you exactly. ain't lying. Bring <laughs> some of that new you culture into this shit because right. this is this is the Breakfast Club. Y'all motherfuckers have been here for a while, yeah. and you should be here for some more time. But the only way to do that is to continue to I roll agree. with the fucking change. Right. I agree. You know what I'm saying? And y'all need a bitch in here. This is the first time you've been up here, <laughs> right? This is the first time Leslie's been up here. <laughs> yep. Because I was like, if, if she were to, I come take this motherfucker. Because <laughs> y'all sitting in here with, with thrones and shit. Fuck off. You're not gonna have time. You're gonna be doing the Daily Show. Oh, you think so? Thank you. Yeah. Yo, first of all, I have to say thank you so much for coming on there. That was one of the best segments I ever done. Thank you for having me. I, I still get people asking me about it. I love that you came on there and was very vulnerable. And it was just wonderful. Thank I, you very I, much. I, you made me a fan of you that day. Seriously. Thank you very much. Real talk. I actually heard you talking about it afterwards on your podcast, too. And I was like, oh, wow. It was thank really you. awesome. Me and Lenny was just like, he was so fucking great. Like, he just really That's good. Thank you. And a lot of people asked me about that. It was like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, man, that what he said was true. Like, you said some really good shit. Thank you very I, I want to start from the beginning from Leslie Jones. If you don't know, how did you get into comedy? What what made this say that this is what I want to do as a kid or a well, I, I, as a, I never thought I was a comedian. I never thought I was a comedian until someone entered me into a contest. I just thought I was silly. Mm-hmm. You know, people invite me to parties and shit and they'd be like, you know, we got to invite Leslie. You know, I just was getting invited to a lot of stuff and just didn't understand why and people like to hang out with me. And one day my friend was like, yo, bitch, because you are stupid. Like, you're really funny. And she was like, you should do comedy. And I was just like, no, that's like Eddie Murphy. That's like mm-hmm. Whoopi Goldberg. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I can't do that. Like, I might be an actress and then I'll act 
like I'm Whoopi. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'll do a role or something. Mm -hmm. I never thought of myself as a stand-up. And then when she signed me up, she signed me up for a contest at college. It was the uh, funniest person on campus. And, what school? Uh, Colorado State. Okay. And um, I was on scholarship in basketball there. And she came and told me, she was like, yo, I signed you up for this contest. And I got mad, but I wasn't really mad because I was like, ooh, well, let's try it. As soon as I touched the mic, it's, it's I can't, I, I tell everybody they think I'm lying, but it was literally like I saw, like it's like I've been doing it forever. Wow. It's like I saw myself, like there was nothing, there was no option of me doing anything else. I was just like a light that went on and a line that went straight. And how did you start preparing after that? So now you want to do comedy, right? But it's like anything else, people, you know, most people that go on stage and think they could do comedy mm -hmm. and then they fail because they don't know sets, they don't know times, they don't know delivery. They so don't when know did you start studying it and say, this is what I want to do? And who did you study? Well, I mean, I, I first of all, what I realized is that I was already studying. Like my dad had every comedy, because he was DJ, so he, I was already into Pigfoot and Millie Jackson and you know, Mom's Man. I already knew about all that mm -hmm. stuff. I had already had the knowledge of it. And, um, uh, as far as like knowing what I was supposed to do on stage, I still was in that that mode of like, well, I, I want to be like Eddie Murphy. I want to be like Whoopi Goldberg. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to be like Richard Pryor. But what I didn't understand is that they are who they are. That's the reason they do the comedy that they're doing. I'm gonna have to find out who I am. I, I learned that from Jamie. So you know when Jamie I Fox? Jamie Fox, okay. yeah. So because he was, I think it was the second time or maybe third time I performed, and. Um, uh, I shit, I bombed like a motherfucker. But when he came on stage, it was like, holy shit, he performs just like Richard Pryor and all that. Like, this is crazy. So it made me go, okay, what is what is this formula? What is this? And um, then when I talked to him, he was just like, you're young. You don't really have nothing to talk about. Go out and live. Go out and discover life. Get fired. Get hired. Get get your heart broke. Break some hearts. Just go through life so you can start have something to talk about. Because mm -hmm. right now you're trying to do jokes and you're not mature enough to do the jokes that you're doing, mm -hmm. and you're not funny enough to do the jokes that you're doing, and you don't have shit to talk about. So, you know that's what I did. I went out and lived. Mm -hmm. I went out and lived, and he was right because by the time I came back, I had shit to talk about. Mm -hmm. So, um, getting prepared is doing, doing like. I mean, me and Mike Tyson had this very conversation. It was like, before I was even Mike anything, I did a thousand fights. So that's basically it. Like I tell New Jacks all night, man, whenever I hear a New Jack or, or anybody complaining about a spot, I'm like, shut the fuck up. You <laughs> shut up. Like, especially when they complain about a main club. And it was like, motherfucker, do you know how long it took right. us to work for right. you to get the fuck spot and you bitching about it? That's right. Man, I'll stump the shit out of you right now in front of this club. So... It's like do a billion. <laughs> so, oh yeah, I, it, yeah. I, do a billion spots. A billion. I don't care. I have performed fucking everywhere, son. I have performed in living rooms. Mm -hmm. I've performed in salons. I've performed in motherfucking classrooms. I've performed everywhere. If it's a mic, I was there. You motherfuckers who've only doing it two or three years, don't nobody give a fuck about what you're talking about. <laughs> Fuck you and do the fucking work. Don't you sound like me yesterday? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> you sound like me it's, yesterday. Yeah, like Instagram motherfuckers. Like there's only, like I said, Jess can pull it off. Mm -hmm. I've seen uh, Pretty V, Pretty V funny. Mm -hmm. But Jess is putting the work. Jess is, she, she continues, continues to. Those fights. Exactly. But she continues yeah. to. Too. Exactly. And that's what people don't understand. You, This is not microwave. You're not going to just become funny overnight. There's no such thing as that. I hate when people say that. You might be a generally funny but you need to go through the steps of becoming a real professional. There's a difference between an amateur and a fucking professional. And everything, everything is, a, so you gotta go through how to write, you gotta, the first three years is just you figuring out how to even stand on stage. Do I want a stool? Do I want some water here? Do I want the, do I want to hold the mic? Do I want to put the mic here? Do I want to sit and say all that? And I never thought like about how that. Like how to talk, huh? Mm -hmm. I never thought about well, No, how to I, talk, how to look at the audience. Do you look right at the audience? Do you look, or I, me, myself, if you really pay attention, I never look at the audience until I'm doing crowd work. I look over the audience because you can't, it's like a concentration thing. You're like zone. Yeah, yeah, I'm in the zone. So, you know, you got to do that. i tell you like this. I had been doing comedy for three years, and I thought I was the shit. Because I was. I was killing that motherfucker. And I went up to Jay Anthony Brown, and I was like, yeah, Jay, when the fuck I'm going to start seeing the fruits of my motherfucking labor? Like, when I'm, when I'm going to blow up? It was like 10 years. I remember bust. I went, I went home and cried because I was like 10. Because this is the thing. 
it wasn't that I said in my head, no, nah, fuck him. You know, because I wasn't that type of comic. I was a very much like when I started comedy, I prayed to God. I said, listen, I want to be a good comic. Mm -hmm. If I'm not going to be a good comic, just let me be a promoter or something because I don't want to do comedy wrong. So when he said the 10 years, I, it was it was not me going, oh, no, nah, that's you saying. And then, no, nah, it was me taking it in from a veteran telling me like, damn, I'm not going to know myself until 10 years. He was like, yeah, all this, you know, pussy fucking and smoking weed, all that. Sh that's Because he literally asked me one day, he said, what do you do during the daytime? And I was like, I do a lot of stuff. He was like, well, from your set, it sounds like only thing you do is fuck and smoke weed and watch game shows. So he was like, that's all we get from it. And I was like, nah, that's that that's the 10 year thing. Because see, first three years, you learn how to be on stage. It's just think of yourself as a toddler. The first year you're walking around, you're doing shit jokes, you're doing pussy jokes, you're doing all the dumb jokes. The second year, you may have graduated a little bit, but you're still doing sex jokes. Sex jokes is, whenever you're seeing people doing sex jokes, unless they're just veterans and they got sex jokes, it's an easy thing to go into. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's like low hanging fruit. So those first three or four years, you're really just deciding who you want to be as a comic or whatever. Five years is when you start getting your gigs. You got a set, you know. The, oh, my God. Whenever I see a new Jack that's doing it two years and they have more than five minutes, I want to run up on stage and smother them with a bag. Like, <laughs> <laughs> who told you that somebody wanted to listen to you for five minutes? No, get one good fucking joke. You should have nothing. Even if they ask for five, you should be doing three. Make that three the strongest that you do. And people who get up there that are new and you start working on your new shit, find a workout place to do that. Because when you come to a main club, you need to be shooting your motherfucking shot. Mm -hmm. Like, don't nobody know you. Yes, I understand trying out new jokes. That is great. But that's like after six or seven years that you get that cocky to go to a spot and try out a new joke. Mm -hmm. You should always have a set set because don't nobody know you yet. So when you get that was to a rhyme. when you Should get to have a set set because don't nobody know you yet. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> make it a t-shirt. Um, <laughs> but after you get eight and nine years, eight, nine, eighth year, ninth year, that's when you start getting the big gigs and stuff. Ten years, ten years is when you get tired of your set. Ten years is when you go, okay, I got the attention. Now what I want to say. Mm -hmm. That's when you start talking about yourself. That's real. That's when that's when that's when you bring them jokes out because you're gonna be good enough to do it. Mm -hmm. And by that time, you got at least twenty thousand sets under your fucking belt, and you should be. And people gotta know the ten ten year rule. There's no way to beat it. Oh fuck all you who saying no. Nah, that bitch don't know what you talking about. I've been in the business since motherfucking eighty seven, bitch. I know. You know how you know what you're saying <laughs> is the truth because even when you look at the new generation, I don't care if it's just hilarious. DC Young Fly, Andrew Schultz, they've all been doing stand up for damn near 10 years or better. Andrew's been doing it for 16. Exactly. That's, Jess should be right at 10 right, right now. And DC should be right at 10 right, right now. So you're absolutely right. Yeah. 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 And it's just like, it's like people want to beat the system and you're not going to beat the system. Put in the fucking work. Put in the fucking work. Your really time question. will come. Leslie, mm -hmm. who do you think curses more? You or Samuel L. Jackson? Mm, we about it the same because we did meet and both of us wow you think I curse a lot I do <laughs> <laughs> the name of your book is Leslie fucking Jones because that's what people say when they come up to me they be like Leslie fucking Jones so that's that's why I made it that but, but it's the first time I cursed in front of my mom because she knew I had a bad mouth my dad did too my dad knew I had a bad mouth but they they was like no you respect enough to not to curse around and then we was walking to the <laughs> store I will never forget this we walking to the store and we I had just went to a parade where they had the drum and I was like mom you should have seen the major rest they were swinging their ass <laughs> and my mom was like yo you're not talking to your friend you better watch your mouth, girl. Word. And ass ain't one of your little curse. Ass is just like yeah, a little bit of a curse. But you know I was about to get into the, you know, fucks and all of that. And she was like, ooh, what you sound like when you're not around me? I was like, very bad. <laughs> very bad. But uh, I think that me and Samuel L. Jackson are the same. I think we curse at the same. And you say y'all met each other? And it was, yeah. Okay. It was hilarious. Um, and I actually imitated him on SNL. I missed that. Oh my God, we did Family Feud. Okay. Mm -hmm. It yo, let me tell you, and I, I don't give a fuck because Kenny gonna love it, but we okay. <laughs> it was one of those those times where you they literally literally let us just have a little fun. Mm -hmm. So they wanted me to be Samuel Jackson, but they was gonna put the beard on me, and for some reason we didn't have the beard, and I just dressed like he like with the uh, hat and the, the leather jacket. Mm -hmm. So. 
And it's like I did look like Samuel, but didn't. Mm -hmm. I just looked like Leslie. You know? So when he came to me and he was like, Samuel Jackson, man, we were laughing so hard because Kenan was like, wait a minute now. <laughs> you don't look like no damn Samuel. <laughs> <laughs> Was he pretending to be Steve Harvey? Or yeah, he was just... it was so funny. Okay, 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 oh my okay, okay. God. And all I kept saying is you can burn in hell. <laughs> 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 it was just like really, really fun. But yeah, when I finally met him, it, yeah, it was just like so funny. But I, I think he cursed less when he met me because I, I don't curse. I, I got to ask. So you talked about you, you remember bombing. So I always ask comedians when they come up, you remember your worst show and your best show? Oh shit, ba babe! Like again, what was a the worst thousand, one? A thousand, a thousand. I can name ten straight. That is probably the same type of worst. Let me see. Uh, I fell off the stage. No, uh, man. <laughs> but that wasn't my worst show. I fell off the stage and got right back up and was like, I'm a stunt man too, and kept ripping. <laughs> um, but you talking about like man. a bomb? Like I remember Kevin Hart came up here one time. He talked about the time when where they threw a chicken wing at him. Charles mm -hmm. Oakley threw a chicken wing at him, right? That was one of his worst shows. So what was like that one show that's always in your mind and be like that motherfucking venue? Damn, I guess. Hmm, I would say riddles, but see, again, I'm such a, I'm a gangster, homie. I'm gonna win the audience. But I would say riddles maybe in Chicago was always kind of a hard room to do. What uh, happened to riddles? I'm, I'm, riddles, a D Ray uh, used to host it. What back happened in the day? I think that's when I fell off the chair. I stood up on a chair and then fell off the chair. But no, I still ripped. That shit was so fucking funny. I could just tell you funny shit. Like I got introduced in in Omaha at this poetry poetry show, and this is, was so hilarious. Like I was, you know, and I was beautiful, like young, had long hair, on the road, and you know, dudes be trying to talk to you and shit, and especially the ones that you want to talk to. So I remember this <laughs> roster dude was trying to talk to me. He was fine, looked like Bob Marley. Oh, fuck. I was like, oh, you're definitely going to the hotel room with me. So I'm talking to him, and then dude's like, I'm about to introduce you, right? And I had on these fucking clunky-ass sandals or something, and he introduced me, and, man, I came down that step and fucking somersault. No, man. Why <laughs> you always falling? <laughs> I rolled, rolled right into, in front of the fucking uh, thing and jumped back up. I was like, yeah, that's how I come on stage. That's how I come on stage. <laughs> Man, I looked over and the roster was paying his bill to leave. I said, you motherfucker. <laughs> you motherfucker. What about the best show? So the best show. What was the most amazing show that you still love? See, still I, just, think about? I just can't. Okay, it's just too many. I, I would say one of my favorite ones is when I went to Grand Rapids, Michigan. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had a whole section that was deaf. And they had the girl doing the... Deaf? Yeah, they were deaf. And mm -hmm. she was signing. So, you know, I have a dirty show. And I was like... How you say suck dick? <laughs> so she was like doing it. So I was like, suck dick, suck dick, suck dick. And she was like, <laughs> and then she got really tired. And I was like, ain't that something? The white girl got tired of sucking dick. Ain't that something? <laughs> Man. <laughs> Grand Rappers, they were on fire. It's so many good shows. It's, oh, I mean, man. when I was on tour with Cat, yeah. like so many. Oh my God. I have to tell the story. Cause I know Cat remember this. Okay, so it was the beginning of the fucking tour. We was in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I remember this. So it was the New Year's show. So we went out perform, and Cat was late. So I had to go out and you know keep performing or whatever. So when Cat got there, you know Cat is Cat. Mm -hmm. So this dude was waiting with a fur coat, like this beautiful black fur coat. So he was like, Cat, I want you to wear it on stage. I want you to wear it on stage. So Cat was like, Yeah. So you put the coat on, and he went out, and you know people lost, and they was already mad that he was late, but. To see him, they lost it. Mm -hmm. They lost, they, they was going crazy. Cat took off that coat and threw it out into the audience and dude was like, oh. <laughs> that dude fainted. No, man. Dude, I, that coat was like $15,000. They ripped that motherfucker apart. He was just like, oh, yo. The cat, I'm sure Cat probably gave him the money no, for it. No, he did not. He did. <laughs> No, he did not. I always hear about Cat being so generous. I, I he may have given it. I just yeah. didn't know. I don't know, but I think Cat was like, that's the way the cricket crumbles, homie. You know, uh, Chris Rock, he did the forward to your book. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you talk about your relationship with Chris Rock? Yeah, I mean, I've known him forever. I know every, you know, all the comedians known mm -hmm. each other forever. Chris, I met Tony Rock before I met actually met Chris Rock. Mm -hmm. But um, just known each other forever. And I used to always just <laughs> bug the shit out of him and be like, yo, I'm only going to make it if somebody like you tell them I'm funny. Why you ain't telling them I'm funny, Chris? Mm -hmm. And he'd just be like, he always say he didn't say I, I I wasn't ready, but he did say that, but he was like, no, they're not ready for you. That's what he was saying, but 
I would always, man, I would chase him out to the car at the at Laugh Factory. I would chase him all the way out to his car, and I'd be like, what the fuck, yo? What you doing? Like, why you, you see me ripping these motherfuckers? And he would just smile at me and get in his car, like, God damn it, Chris! I love but, what uh, he said in the four, though. He said, he talked about how SNL could easily find white comedians because mm -hmm. of institutions, but mm -hmm. don't have an idea where to find funny black people. So how difficult is it for a black comedian to be discovered for it's, a platform like Just SNL? like what he said, like you find them in the institution, you find the funny bitches at the DMV, and that's real talk. <laughs> like uh, Barbara Carlisle, I will always mention Barbara Carlisle because Barbara Carlisle, when I was coming out, was one of the biggest female, I mean, like so freaking funny, like mm -hmm. funny as hell. How she didn't blow up, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because she didn't say, have the same opportunities as maybe a white you know, female comic can get seen easier. They get the Laugh Factory mm -hmm. spots and Comedy Store and the Cellar and all of that stuff. You know, and really, like, we have to vouch for each other. Like, at the Cellar, I had to vouch for, uh, for Yam... I always say her name wrong. Yamanika. Yamanika. I always say her Yamanika name wrong. She, she loves that I mess her name up, but she be like, you know how to say my name, bitch. One of the... F <laughs> Man, when I say Yamanika... Yamanika. Yamanika. <laughs> See? <laughs> and she gonna be like, God damn it, Leslie. So funny. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. one of my favorite. Oh, I love Yamanika. I oh, love she's so funny. So, and she don't care. She will just tell you, tell her. But at first, they weren't going to let her in the cellar. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yo, if I hadn't got SNL, that would be me. Mm -hmm. So let her in. You got white comics down there talking about having sex with their wife with a Christmas roll. And you talking about she's blue? No, nah, fuck that. Put her up. So, you know. It's it's like that's it's just that type of community, you know, it's that type of community. But but you know, Chris Chris knew what he so, was so doing. So does it take somebody like a Chris to say, "Yo, you need to put her on"? Well, now I mean, nowadays, now it's different. Now okay. we're getting a lot more love. But back in the day, yeah, you you got to get introduced through mm -hmm. a, a male. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how it is. Old boys club. Now every comedian always talk about bad promoters, and promoters are always bad in the comedy Shitty world. Promoter, yeah. How bad was Shiesty. it for you? Shy oh, very. And like, and I'm just to tell you, I'm pretty sure just to tell. Shiesty ass promoters, they bad for everybody. But for women, it's extra. It's an extra layer there mm -hmm. because, oh God, I hate to say it like this, because it was really hard in the beginning. Because promoters, you know, you have some of the promoters that think they're gonna get the fuck you, or either like that you that that you are being brought for them to fuck. You know, I, I remember, and I'm not gonna even mention this comic, but when he hear the story, he gonna fucking know who he is. But I remember, but because I was all these that, man, I came from. Hoes, pimps, and crackheads, and drug dealers. Mm -hmm. You comedy niggas is jokes. Y'all niggas are clowns. Like, I wouldn't fuck you with my enemies, pussy. Damn. And I don't like that bitch. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Fuck her with a hard dick, but not yours. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so you would like when I first came it, it was like if you if there was a headline and they want you to go on the road it's like are you fucking are you fucking it, it used to be like that but I would get on the road because I was funny but you you definitely would have the moments where hey why you not being nice to the promoter the promoter like you why you not being nice to the promoter man fuck that that nigga is 72 mm. <laughs> and he has on my grandfather's suit damn what the fuck? You think I'm going to fuck the promoter? What, what what deal is you making? You know, I mean, that type of shit. Or the hotels. Like, I remember another fucking comment. We were all on the same hallway. And they didn't get no bitches because they not going to get no bitches. And they're like, oh, we just trying to figure out who going to get to come to Leslie's room. I said, none of you hoes. And what was so funny is that I actually was hooking up with somebody tonight. And that motherfucker walked right down the hallway. And I opened up the door. It's like, yeah, that's who gets the pussy. Not you dirty niggas. Damn. Like, you dirty dick. Okay, okay, you're going to have to cut all that. <laughs> no, you're not. We good. got a fan. I, I even had a comedian come to my room to give me my money, and my homegirl was there. We was Come to my room and say, hey, so you got your friend here, so y'all want to have... What? Uh, what? What makes you think that somebody want to fuck you, you light-skinned piece of shit? Damn. No, I no, and I'm and and any comic you ask me ask about me will tell you I am that bitch mm -hmm. that yeah we don't fuck with less. That's a, you know it's so funny what you talk about with the money thing. That's what I'm always <laughs> concerned about with women and promoters because I'm always like when oh. promoters be short, they'll they, they, they they're more than likely to be like I'm not giving her oh, her money because they oh. don't feel like nothing gonna happen. Oh, I she's talking about worst shows and I'm a mention everybody name in this shit. Oh, okay, boy. so I'm in New York, mm -hmm. New York, you know. 
It's not that many women when I was doing it. It's mm -hmm. a few, and we get them shows or whatever. And yes, I did a show for Ray Dijon. Ray! So he books me in fucking Brooklyn, mm -hmm. right? And it's, I remember it was Drew Frazier, somebody else, and I don't remember who this promoter's name was, but he, I guess because I was a female and the crowd wasn't good. Mm -hmm. So Drew went up, he did all right. Another comedian went up and they wasn't really doing that well. So he comes over to me and he goes, yo, just do 10 minutes. Just do 10 minutes, because he didn't know me. Mm -hmm. So he's like, just do 10 minutes. And I, I was like, okay, well, no problem. And he was like, I'll pay you when you get off stage. So I was like, all right, all right. So I get on stage and I'm ripping. Mm -hmm. I'm destroying. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes, I got off. Why the fuck you get off stage? Why the fuck you get off stage? I was like, dude, you told me that. Cause he literally came over and said, I don't think I'm gonna have all the money, just do 10 minutes. So I was like, you just told me to do 10 minutes. You, he was like, no, you were killing, no, fuck that, fuck that, I'm not paying you. Damn. So I'm just like, new to New York and I'm just like, dude, like, and so I go to Ray DeJean, I was like, yo, this motherfucker's not gonna pay me, you book me, what the fuck, Ray? And he was like, yeah, I'm talking to, I don't, I don't know. I was like, what the fuck? So I called Rob Stapleton. Salute to Rob. Yeah, shout out to Rob. I love Rob Stapleton. Rob Stapleton called Big Biff, and I don't know where Biff is now today, but he called Big Biff, and they got out that car. Big Biff's hand was around that promoter's neck so fast. <laughs> he was like, and then he was like, you gonna do a fucking female like that, motherfucker? You better, and that, he was like, nah, dude. It wasn't like that. She just wasn't patient enough to, to wait for yeah, 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 my yeah. fucking money. <laughs> yeah. like, like, like real talk, they do think that they can punk. Mm -hmm. Punk uh, people. I've Wonder. had had a lot of had a lot of promotions in Atlanta. Oh, so when you're paying out my money, so so how much I owe you? I only owe you six hundred. No, you owe me eleven hundred. Keep counting. Oh, okay, no ride to the airport. Damn, like shit like that. Mm. Oh no, I have been left at venues. Mm. Oh, the car leaving. Okay, I'm the female. You should wait for the female. Oh, they went back to the hotel. Really. Damn. Oh no, it's a lot of shit. And that's why, that's why I always say now, cause I'm sure the shoe is a little different now because women do speak up. Mm -hmm. But I always tell male comedians, when you're on the road with a female, fucking look out for her. That's right. Mm -hmm. Look out for her because like, like I know a lot of female comedians that's been raped, mm. that's been fucking uh, like hurt, beat up, slapped by other comedians. And you know who you are. Damn. Real talk, like Damn. it's like it's another battle. It's another battle mm -hmm. because we are women. But like I said, I'm a big six feet. You know, she gotta go, she gotta go in like five minutes. Okay, hold on, a couple more questions from the book. You wrote your first joke in 97, right? But didn't use it until 2010. Why yeah. weren't you confident in performing that material? It wasn't my first joke, it was my first real joke. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, because the same thing with Jamie said, you don't have enough skill to tell that joke yet. Mm -hmm. You know, or you don't, like after, and it's real talk, after my parents passed away, after my brother, after my brother died, I that's when I was like, I'm doing all that shit. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have to have some type of hunger too. Mm -hmm. And and you are talented enough to do your material, but there are some jokes that are more advanced when you write it that you got, okay, I'm gonna do that in a couple of years. Or either you're gonna give it to someone else. Mm -hmm. But, um, my first real joke was from a bad date. Um, and I was sitting in the middle of the living room eating cold Chinese food. Mm -hmm. And I had three bad dates in a row that week. Damn. So I was sitting there and I was like, this is some bullshit. Like, back in the slave days, I'm like a Mandingo. Mm -hmm. I would have all of the good, mm -hmm. <laughs> all the good dick. I would have, I would never be single. I would never fucking be single. <laughs> like, I just wouldn't. Like, I would get all the Denzels, I would get all the Shacks, I would get Kimbo Slice, I would, and then every nine months, I'm How like- you know the dick good, though? You just never it don't matter. <laughs> I just wouldn't be single. <laughs> I, I, I would, I, my card would be full, yeah. you know? Look at my teeth. So. You got all your, your teeth look nice? Look like very nice teeth. teeth. And yeah. you know, I'm going, you know, I'm going to have kids with good teeth. So. You, you end the book with Welcome to My Funeral. Why, why is that? Because, I mean, how, how, every time you see a celebrity funeral, don't you go, they didn't plan that. Like, they had Aretha, Aretha and Whitney's funeral was so long, Jesus was like, why are they not here yet? So <laughs> I specifically wrote how I want my fucking funeral. Okay. You know, just, I just, you know, that's how I want my funeral. If we're going to have a long funeral, let's make it a goddamn event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I've always wanted to be burnt like a warrior. You mean cremated? Cremated. Nope. 
burnt like a warrior, like with the, the, the arrows. Like, you know how they make that spiff in Game of Thrones and then they put you on the top and they say, that I've all, that's exactly how I want to go. Why? I don't, they, I don't think they Why do that. not, they motherfucker? They, they don't do that anymore. Why not? Why <laughs> not? It's your funeral, you right, you right. Exactly. You right, you right. What the fuck <laughs> you gonna ask, I'm dead. Don't give a fuck. Respect my goddamn wishes. Respect my <laughs> wishes. I want to be fucking... <laughs> Like King Tut in this motherfucker. <laughs> and I want a bitch to walk in with some dragon eggs and come out with dragons. <laughs> you, now, I know you got to go, but are you going to be the host of The Daily Show? You're doing it all next week. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Am I, I don't, you tell me. Do you want? I mean, was that something you would want? You know what? I'm not going to lie. I, I think I'd be pretty good at it. Yeah, yeah. You and are, I think I think it. nighttime is ready for a black woman. Mm -hmm. uh, ready for one that's ready, too, to, to, to go do it. Because I feel like I've been built for that shit. Like... Mm -hmm. I call myself the 2000 year old woman because I've been through every decade, but I feel like they need somebody who is, can bring joy and bring laughter and, 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 and inform people in a way that they, they like take their medicine with some the candy. It's time to bring some laughter back to life period. Mm -hmm. It's time for everybody to stop being so fucking offended. How about, this is what I want to say. Everybody has been acting for the last five years, like a motherfucking five year old. Everybody needs to stop the what about me shit because it's just starting to become ridiculous at this point mm -hmm. and grow the fuck up. Mm. Grow the fuck up. I am sick of it. Y'all sick of it and you mm -hmm. know you you Hell know yeah. you mm -hmm. you know you showing your ass. Mm -hmm. Act like a motherfucking grown up. You know what's right, you know what's wrong. Stop acting like a fucking 5 year old. That's right. And that's what our society is acting right not, like now. And you know, like I, everybody in here know, it always be a black woman that come and go. Knock it off, fix it pop, right pop. No, no, see, That's right, that's right. It was Esther right Rose, that's remember? Right. Nail Carter, right. Oprah Winfrey. You know, we got all our sisters that came in just, let's get this shit right back. That's right. What y'all doing? And Man, you think Daily Show, Daily Daily show would allow you the platform to do that? Man, yes. Right. I'm like, I like the 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 piece on therapy. I want to. I I feel like I want to talk to men too, and like I I'm going to give y'all so much permission to fucking learn and and advance to where mm -hmm. we are as women. Like we doing the work. Men are not doing the work, and I'm going to say it. Y'all not doing the work. And let me just say this too. <sighs> y'all don't know shit about pussy. It's one of your favorite things. It's one of your favorite things. You don't know shit. I don't understand how you don't know shit about pussy. Or if your dick is working properly. What should we know though? Go to first of all, go to the doctor, put your nuts in a doctor's hand and cough to the fucking left. Find out what's wrong with your dick first. <laughs> There's a lot of no, I'm being very right, honest. Right. I've been hooking up and dudes' dicks are not working properly. Y'all then ate all that fucking McDonald's and all that shit. You yeah. ain't drinking mm -hmm. water. You're not fucking taking care of yourself. And that's your dick. That's like one of your prized possessions. Mm -hmm. You go get your car checked. You won't get your dick checked. Damn. And then get mad at us when your dick don't work. Don't get mad at me. That's your department. Damn. That's your department. That's real. Go get your dick checked. Mm -hmm. And then and then go get your mind checked. Mm -hmm. Stop showing up to Tinder dates expecting me to solve your fucking dilemma. I show up for dick and you throw me a Rubik's Cube of your fucked up ass shit. Like... I don't know why your daddy don't love you. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Your mind affects your dick. It affects your dick. It affects your dick. Do you think you're going to be walking around sad and depressed and your dick is just going to be out, out here wilding? No, it's not. It's sad like you. So take care of your dick. I really believe that's a lot of problems with these with these. Um, podcast dudes and these passport bros y'all don't know how to fuck a woman correctly and then when she tell you that now she ain't shit no go learn how to fuck i bet you to solve a lot of problems between us because y'all don't know how to fuck and you mad because we do this is the best mental health promo i ever I'm heard just, in my life. i'm being honest your with y'all your mind your, your dick no, I'm, you're no right. I am being so honest. I really believe that a lot of friction is now women are going, we are tired of bad sex and we're tired of being quiet about bad sex. I had some bad sex two nights ago. I told two him to get the ago? at the Ritz. I told that motherfucker to get the fuck out. Damn. How dare you fuck me like that at the Ritz? So Damn. The, goddamn, the goddamn Empire State Building is right there. How you fuck me like that in front of the Empire State Building? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. 
Well, at least it ain't no surprise to him. He's not hearing this for the first time. Yeah, on not, breakfast trust level. me. <laughs> Jesus. Leslie. You know who you are. <laughs> Leslie, <laughs> Leslie fucking, fucking Jones. Jones. Ladies and gentlemen. Go get her book right now. And yes. Make sure you watch her on The Daily Show all next week, hosting The Daily Show. And to that gentleman, oh. she's talking about go get therapy. You're going to need some help. Lord have mercy. <laughs> all that. <laughs> Where did they find you, Leslie? At Les Dog? Uh, yes, at Les Dog. I think it's like 4Gs on Instagram, mm -hmm. 3Gs on Twitter. And what I usually say is, why is that? Because I'm a motherfucking G. There you go. That's right. <laughs> and the book, is the book available everywhere now? Yes. Book and, everywhere oh, everywhere the now. audio is kicking because okay. the audio is different because I don't really read it. I just tell the stories. Mm. So it's really good. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you just don't want to read, you, you should read. That's right. You should read. Well, Learn how Leslie, to curse of right, too. It's Leslie, Leslie Jones. Leslie fucking Jones. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Yeah. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.